morning drive. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. I'm cool. Hey, you kids, let's get down. Get funky. How do you do, fellow kids? Love listening to you on my way into work. And, uh... All right, we get the point. We're more worried about breakfast right now, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Channel 90. Get it all over yourself, boys and girls. Here you go. Now, the morning drive with Mike Bagley and Pete Fistoni. <laughs> Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 live and on the air for this Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. Mike Bagley here in Del Marvel Studio 1D. We've got Pistol Pete Pistoni in the Python Palace in Chicago. We've got Sammy and Davey in Studio 134 of the Beltway Bureau in our nation's capital. We welcome each and every one of you to this Wednesday morning and happy hump day to you, Triple P. Good morning, Bagman. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to one and all. We are halfway home on the week here on TMD. Get ready to head into the final off weekend of 2023 until Father's Day weekend, when we'll have our other off weekend. And yes. uh, to me, it That's smells correct. like smells like the season's right around the corner, back, man. Well, listen, I got to tell you. What is going on we, over there? Within the last five minutes, <laughs> I had to look inside and see if this is happening on my porch. We have had a skunk that has let loose in this neighborhood. Wow. I mean, for God's sakes, son, what is wrong with you? What is going on out here? Holy cow. I mean, let loose. Well, Man. now, usually, uh, you know, we have skunks here. I've talked about it before, but not usually in the wintertime. I don't know if the skunks here in Chicago go south. Maybe they go over to the eastern seaboard, and that's one of ours. It's not winter here. We're going to be 55 today. It's well, they're like, all messed up. See, they're all they're mixed all up. worked up. The daffodil, okay, so I had six inches of snow on the ground like six, seven days ago, and now the daffodils are coming up. Everybody's See, mixed up. get all screwed up. All, all screwed, screwed up. up. I looked out the back yesterday, no snow left, and I looked over to the side near the, where the grill area is, and there's the daffodil saying, ah, 60 degrees, 55 degrees, I'll come out and play. And they're going to be buried in snow, I'm sure, by the time April rolls around. So everybody just oh, yes. take, you know, just... Even wow. even the skunks, even the wildlife. Everybody take a look at the calendar. It's only February 8th. Don't get too worked up. Just make sure, obviously, uh, well, they can't get into anything, right? You don't have a garage or anything like that. Because I had one in the garage one time. That's a mess. That That's a mess. Oh. Yeah. What do you do there? Paint your walls with tomato uh, V8. or are you, What is it? You bathe in milk or bathe in... To, like it, if you get it, sprayed, what do you what do you juice. dip yourself in? Tomato juice, like V eight or to, tomato juice. Well, I don't know about V eight. Oh, I could add a V eight. No, it's uh, a tomato juice. Well, so that's that. Well, that's that bougie tomato juice. souped up, <laughs> souped up tomato <laughs> juice. Yeah, I had uh, again not buddy, but I've had some friends who've had dogs who've gotten sprayed by skunks, and apparently that mm -hmm. neutralizes the smell or something like that. So <sighs> stay away, Baggy. Uh, we don't want you bathing in tomato we juice. We need to this fire weekend. up the old tomato sauce fountain up in here right now. I don't want you watching the Super Bowl sitting in a tub of tomato juice on Sunday. You don't want that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, sent you boys a video last night. Just a little example of what we're working with over here. Um, I was going to send you another one this morning when we have, uh, and what I'm speaking of is obviously I live near the Philadelphia market, and the Philadelphia television market's pretty, well, they're pretty jazzed up right now about what's going on out in Arizona. Sure. And um, they've been asking listeners to submit pictures and videos of how, how they're showing their team spirit. And um, last night we had three kids from a middle school singing the Eagles fight song barbershop quartet style, even though there's only three of them. Um, and then this morning we got the photo album of pets in Eagles jerseys. Oh yeah. And uh -huh. Eagles wear this the morning so tried and true uh television news stuff's yeah. happening out by you for sure yeah. they have set they have sent half of the newsroom out there and they're doing live hits outside the stadium because they won't let them in till sunday mm -hmm. they can't get in to do their hits inside so i'm sure that there's like this you know how it looks like at certain things you have all these like tents with cameras and everybody mm -hmm. doing live shots kind of mm -hmm. like the north lawn of the white house yeah that's what's going on right there and our folks are Doing their live and their recorded stuff, and uh, they listen. Hat the hats are in victory lane. They've just gone ahead and just unpopped the corks on the champagne bottles. I mean, hurry up, play the game because we're losing the fizz. Trouble. It's like let's go. Trouble. Do you know? And uh, this one, I've never heard of this one before. 
Half of the school districts in, in and around the Philadelphia area have already either canceled school for Monday or have made Monday virtual learning. We're waiting to see what the city of Philadelphia is going to do. And they've also tentatively canceled class for the parade next week. This is how deep they're going with this. I'm like, be careful. Be careful. This has got a lot of blowback opportunity. Well, I think you need to be ready, but the problem is because the game starts so late. Be ready, so but late. don't tell the world about it, right? Well, Have the plans, but you got to let the whole world know about it. Canceling school on Monday when the game doesn't start till after 6.30 Eastern time, that's kind of tough if you don't say ahead of time, don't come to school on Monday. The parade, you got a little baked in time. Obviously, if you don't win, there ain't no parade, right? So everybody just go about your business. Well, the mentality is the school districts want the children to be able to celebrate as well. Well, first of all, you're assuming there's going to be a celebration. Okay, mm-hmm. that's number one. Number two, you know, again, when we were walking uphill, 85 miles to school, backwards with no feet and on our hands and knees in a blizzard, you know, we didn't get days off. There we go. Of course, you know, Delaware didn't have any sports teams. So well, guess, there's that. Know, hey, you know what? Shut her down. Uh, <laughs> the Blue Hens beat Navy over the weekend, not going to school. No, no. <laughs> we've, uh, I, I can't remember. I mean, we've had things here in Chicago. Well, it's been a lot so long since the Bears have been in that position. Well, the Bears won in 86, I remember, because I was working at, a, at an agency right downtown. And it was cold that day. Because the, the, then the Super Bowl was at the end of January. It didn't leak into February. So it was like the first week of February when they had the parade, a couple of days. It was freezing cold. And I just remember the city streets were just packed. The bus went up and down. Late, you know, lately, the Bulls and the Blackhawks and even the Cubs or the White Sox when they won in 2005, they have everything down in Grant Park where the Chicago Street Circuit race is going to be. So it's a little more contained. And then the parade route comes up and down like Michigan Avenue and all that kind of thing. But I don't remember, point being, if schools were out or not. I, I don't remember the schools being let out for that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, well. God bless. So I, I told you, uh, Sammy, my nephew, is out there at uh, Radio Row for Arizona State University, and Maz is out there for Sirius XM. 6,000 media credentials have been distributed. I, th- I believe that's the number. 6,000 media? That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, and I saw pictures of you know, Radio Row. Oh, my God. It's just a sea of people. Sea of people. Radio stations everywhere. I mean, it's un- it's unreal, and I think you know, me- media day. I don't think the actual media day is until what tomorrow. I want to say so. That's when the dumb questions will be asked of some well, of the players. Well, they had um, they had an interesting um, statoid on uh, the news last night. So they they are expecting at Sky Harbor and the surrounding FBOs, FBOs, yeah. fixed base operators. Those those are the quote unquote private plane airports. They are expecting um, a thousand private jets to fly in for the Super Bowl Whoa! on Sunday. Uh, they are expecting an additional 4,000 takeoffs and landings and an additional 1,000 aircraft parked at the airports around the Phoenix area. Um, that's a lot. Imagine everybody trying to leave. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, you're... you're um, you're cleared, uh, runway 29 left. You're 33rd for departure. We'll get to you in about two and a half hours. Who gets <laughs> third? Who gets a mat? Because if you're flying private, you know, you got to have, you're probably a, you got some money. You are probably a person of, uh, higher, like, social stat. You know what I mean? Like, like a, I'm just saying, like, you're, you're a millionaire. You're, you're, you're a rich person. Like, imagine being, hey, I flew here privately. Hey, you're 50th in line to take off, hey, buddy. Warren Buffett, you're 71st for departure. I dude. don't think Warren Buffett's 71st to take. Who is, who would be, like, What's the pecking order, though? How do you do Who is the number one person to take who off? Who gets there first? You think so? That's all except it is, right? Except for, except for, hang on. Ooh. I learned this. Now, this is on the commercial side. So, Air traffic controllers are very, I don't want to say pampered, but they're well taken care of. Mm -hmm. I know, I know this for a fact of someone who was involved in the process that worked at Southwest. To get preferential treatment in the tower, Southwest Airlines would buy televisions for the break room, Mm. Cater in food, kind of like what hospitals do with pharmaceutical companies, yeah. where you know, all of a sudden so wrong. That's Smith, so wrong. Smith Klein Beecham's coming in next week. Next thing you know, you've got enough to feed five thousand people, and you're eating steak, right? Mm-hmm. That's because they yeah. want them to use their yeah. product. Mm-hmm. But now that that was a long time ago. But I don't know if you know. I I don't see 
you know, Jeff Bezos trucking up top of the tower, sliding the guy 100, saying, hey, get us to the front of the line. Yeah. But I think from what I understand, it's first come, first serve. So you get there. That's why you're on the phone. Get that plane fired up. We'll be there in 15 minutes. And you want to get out there? Because you know what? It's the same way at Daytona International Airport after the 500. Sure. All those aircraft, they are lined up. You should see the stream of airplanes. Mm-hmm. If they're going out o- over the ocean, we're back at our hotel. Every one minute, 90 seconds, there's a plane taking off going out over the water. Yeah. It's amazing. What did Spirit Airlines get for their pack of nabs and flat root beer? Where do they get them in the packing order? <laughs> we'll let you take off. You know what? Just, Maybe. If, if you can take off, go right ahead and we'll do it. We'll ignore all the things you yeah. got going on with you. We'll just let you take right. off and just kind of sweep that under the rug right. there for you. That'll well, be uh, $100,000 for your check bag. And, and to your point about Sky Harbor, obviously, I mentioned yesterday, I just sent you guys a picture. Sammy, my nephew's out there. The Waste Management Open is Beautiful. happening. So you got all those people converging. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he was out there yesterday. I guess yesterday was like media day or whatever, but that looks gorgeous. I'm, I'm jealous of the kids. I just want to get him go. 16. I'm I telling want, you. I need to be on And by the way, 16 is where they get raw because they're, they're – Somebody makes a hole in one or whatever. They're throwing beer can or not beer cans, but they're well. Yeah, they did last year. They, they did last year in yeah. celebration. Well, not cans. They were plastic cups. Well, yeah, yeah, so but they were throwing no, beers at people. And they, and people were having yeah. their- <laughs> they God, nothing worse yell. They scream. Everything that golf isn't, they are at sixteen, and that's why I need to be yeah. there. Happy Gilmore in real life. Yeah, hit that again. What did he say? Mashed potato. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. People, people love screaming things like "Baba Booey." <laughs> Baba Booey. You know, yeah, on a, on mashed a, potatoes. On a par five. Yeah, par five, uh, five hundred eighty-five yard. You know, mashed potatoes. Just get over it, dude. I hate it so much. <laughs> I, I, I love mashed potatoes. I, I can tell you that. Yeah. Think, well, you know, he's just screaming and yelling at people. You know, there's no decorum in this world today. Um. Well, speaking of that, to a degree. Um, I've got a situation here that happened to me that I need to run by you guys because I don't know if I should be upset about this or not. And it's something that is, um, well, it took me by surprise and I'm having a difficult time processing it. IBM presents You Make the Call. So I had to go get blood work done for my normal checkup, my A1C and all that stuff. And it requires me to fast. Well, if I'm fasting, that means you can't have anything 12 hours prior to them collecting the specimen. So stop eating at 6 o'clock on Friday night. Go to bed, get up, and the lab core opens over here at 6 in the morning. I'm there at 535, and by like 10 of 6, there's 20 of us in line, right? You got to get there early. So I'm on the pole. I'm leading us to green. Take the FBO. So I, I know, right? Hey, got there first, and by the way, I ran the girls back some donuts in there. Come I was going to say, what'd you, what'd you give them to bribe them? <laughs> Let's so, go. <laughs> so you go up, you, and you put your ID there, and you scan it, and you're ready. And all of a sudden, Michael, come on back. I'm like, what is this, Elton Sawyer? Take him Elton Sawyer. Sawyer. What's going on here? <laughs> Morning, Michael. Uh, by the way, I love it when he does that. Anyway, we digress. So go back there, and it's one of these things now where I kind of feel uncomfortable because when they submit the blood work from the doctor's office, they don't give you paper. You're trusting it's going to be in the system. I yeah. like going in there with paper. Be like, <laughs> here, do this. Well, mm-hmm. nope. I got the paper from what is two doctors. I had to get some blood work for my PCP and blood work for my heart doctor. So I go in there and total combined, it was two tubes of juice, basically. I, I had one needle and then, but this is where I'm conflicted. So the way my insurance is, I have a $50 copay when I go for lab work. You walk in, you give them the ID, you give them driver's license, and they say, here, $50 copay, and they print you off the little, matter of fact, I have it right here. Here it is. They print you off the little sheet. So as she's processing one, she takes the copay, and then she goes to Dr. Q's blood work, which, by the way, is the same blood work that's on my PCPs. She takes another copay. Two fifty dollars copays, and you're only jabbing me once. She double dipped. That's like going to a doctor for a routine physical and a cold. They only take one copay. I'm seeing the same guy one time. We're just doing two different things. So should I like challenge this? Because to me, you're going in once, one vein, one needle, two tubes, done. But yeah, I'm getting a double copay. What's going on here? Is this a shakedown? No, I think it's $50 a tube is how it's looking at me because they've got to run tests on different – they're looking for different things. Maybe that's what it is. 
I'm not saying it's right, but maybe that's their logic. Well, I got they don't one charge tube. by the tube. It's the lab and counter. Did you bring? Well, but, but but that's my point. So they're going to do one lab for one thing because you said they're testing for two different things. They probably feel okay, two different things, two different copays. But it's on the same order. I mean, the way it works is Shake you down. take one tube of blood and you can do four tests out of that well, same tube. Obviously, but now they might be. You know, it's like uh, a la carte. Maybe that's what. What it is. if they're going to two different places? Are they going to two different locations there to you be go. tested? And like if they, we have you know quest, what I mean? That's here it's done else. in-house. It's all done in-house in that building. It's in not box going too? anywhere. Still in huh? box? Still in box. Still in box. I, I don't know. I, that seems just, did you did you bring it up to them and say, like, why am I getting charged? I did. And what and they I'm say. like, well, listen, I said, You're only you're only jabbing me once. What's up with the two copays? <laughs> I I mean, I decorated it up a little bit better. What are they just gonna say? And she's get like, out. Get out. Yeah, you know, she says that is interesting. Well, you know what? I'll just let the billing department take care of it, which means here comes the call to the billing department. Oh, and I'm on that's an outrage. I was trying to resolve it. So but that's what's next. Actually, yeah. you owe us $500 now instead of $250. <laughs> right, exactly. Payments. Sorry, she's added a zero. You it's, got like off appealing, easy. it's like appealing a fine to NASCAR. Oh, we're actually going to make it worse on you. To me, I think the copay should be by the jab, right? I would you're going think... in once, but you're taking out two tubes. Or, or, so, or by, why by are you the, charging me twice? By the by the visit, but I guess well, I'd be curious of what they say. If is it now just you know just cut and paste, split it up, one over here, well, one over here, two two I'm, copays. I'm waiting for um, the the billing to come because trust me, that lab work was Friday. I'm sure I'll have a bill in my mailbox today. <laughs> no well, them. I'm surprised. I be, hey, listen, my deal that what was it last Monday, a week ago Monday, I haven't gotten anything yet from them. So shh, quiet. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Cross my fingers. I don't know even know what I don't even know what my copay is to be honest with you. I have no idea. I just hand them. I'm like you. I just hand them the card. Do what you need to do, and we'll worry about that later. Oh my aching back! Double jeopardy. <laughs> I'm just telling you. All it's right, not well, right. Stand it up. Keep us posted. Coming up, bottom of the hour. We got headline check number one. Also coming up uh, on the heels of the first checking of those headlines, Pistol Pete's got a power rank NASCAR Cup Series organizations, and then. We're going to have a conversation that will ensue about all of those organizations. Do a little fun exercise over, under, number of wins. Got a lot in store there and lots that you can chime in about at 866-BITLANE and also on Twitter at SiriusXM NASCAR, hashtag TMD NASCAR. We've got the calendar coming up at 850. Dustin Long of NBC Sports will join us at 9 a.m. in the East as we are with you until 11 a.m. in the East right here on your home for NASCAR. TMD is brought to you in part by our friends at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. The NASCAR Hall of Fame is the home of legends, where you can explore the past, present, and future of the sport we all love. Plan your next visit at nascarhall.com.